Let's get started. Uh, so today we will discuss about uh, human reproduction and uh, in this topic we will try to cover about the male and the female reproductive system and uh, what are the different organs uh, are involved uh, in, in the system. We will try, uh, try to understand the whole topic in, in that way. Uh, so before starting a human reproduction uh, one has to understand the actual aspect of reproduction. So, every uh, uh, living individual can perpetuate his own generation by a process of reproduction. So, the whole animal kingdom is divided uh, into uh, various forms based on uh, the birth pattern. How they are giving birth to the young ones are basically categorized into different uh, types and accordingly we can define the different uh, varieties uh, uh, of uh, animal species. Uh, so, there are uh, species of animals which are giving directly birth to the young ones and those are called as viviparous. So, viviparous animals are the one which are giving birth to the young ones. The second varieties are oviparous. Now, these oviparous animals are the one which are giving egg. So, they are egg laying animals. They are laying the eggs outside environment and egg as such is getting developed outside uh, the body. So, they are not developing uh, the young ones inside the body, but basically they are laying the eggs outside and uh, the egg is getting developed into a young ones later on outside uh, the body. Well, we have the mixture of these two and we called it ovoviviparous. And in ovoviviparous animals, the uh, egg laying uh, animals, but the egg is not laid as such. The egg is getting developed inside the body and the young ones are getting hashed out. Young ones are getting birthed or young ones are getting out from the body. So, basically they are egg bearing animals. They are having eggs, but the eggs, uh, egg is getting matured inside the body and they are giving birth to the young ones. So, for example, there are many fish varieties are there. There are many insect varieties are there. So, the amphibians are also following this pattern where the egg is getting matured inside the body and they are giving birth to the young ones. So, the basic difference between these all species, now here the viviparous animal are having connectivity, we call the connection is there in the body, where the fetus, the young one is getting nutrition, getting some nourishment from the mother's body, body. while in case of oviparous animals, there is no connection as such. So, the egg is coming out and then all the development is taking place in the egg, while in case of Ovoviviparous animal, there is no connectivity in the body as such, but the development is taking place inside the body. So, there are a couple of examples as I said. We have some fish, we have certain varieties of amphibians, we have some insects. So, uh, the, these are the three modes of reproduction. So, all right, we will move on and try to discuss that. What are the important uh, uh, organs involved in this human reproduction? So, let us try to understand it first and then we will we'll jump into the individual uh, organs as such. Now, when we are talking about the reproduction, when we are talking about the human reproduction particularly, we have two things in mind the sex. So, 
there, there is a clear cut sexual uh, uh, differentiation in human being. So, one can nicely differentiate that a person is male or, a, or another one is female. So, let us start with this one and then we will try to understand this one uh, from, uh, from the organ point of view. So, we have male and then we have female. So, these are the two distinct sexual uh, kind of uh, uh, individuals available in human kingdom uh, in the human being actually as such. So, the male and the female are having very specific organs, very specific kind of uh, system available for uh, reproductive aspect. The organ which are involved, the organ which is involved in the male reproductive system we call it testis. They, they are, uh, so, there are two uh, testes actually, so uh, a pair of testes and similarly in case of female we have ovary. So, we have ovary as a reproductive organ in case of female and we have testes in case of male. Now, these testes are responsible for the production of a very unique form of cells which are which are the first cell of the human body. Actually, this is the after joining these are forming the first cell of the body, but the one which is coming out from the testes we call it sperm. And this is sperm is nothing, but the male gamete. So, we are calling it as a male gamete or male cell reproductive cell actually. So, male reproductive cell counterpart is sperm and in case of female we have over. So, these are the productive organs. So, they are ova is produced in ovary and the sperms are produced in testes. <coughs> now, the, the process of formation of this sperm in testes is called spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis. Sperm means sperm and genesis means formation. So, there will be a formation of a sperm by a process called spermatogenesis and the organ involved is called testis and is, is there in male. Similarly, we have ova formed by a process called oogenesis and uh, the, the formed product is called ova and it is formed in an organ called ovary. So, we have uh, this two distinct gamete, one is from male side and one is the female side. These two gametes are formed by these two process and collectively this two process is called, this, since these are gametes, so they are called as gametogenesis, gametogenesis. So, these, this process is formation of gametes. So, male gamete we call sperm and the female gamete we call ova and the whole process is collectively called as gametogenesis. The gametogenesis in case of male is called spermatogenesis. The gametogenesis in case of females are called as oogenesis, the formation of ova actually. So, this is the first stage actually. So, there will be a formation of gamete. Now, the gametes are formed in these two distinct kind of sexual dimorphism. We are calling it sexual. So, we can nicely distinct that these, these this is male and this is female in case of human being. So, now we, we are talking about that. So, in male we have a sperm and in female we have ova. Now, there will be a process in order to mix these two things. So, the process of transfer of a sperm into female reproductive system in order to fuse sperm with ova is called insemination. So, we have process called insemination. So, insemination is a process of transferring of sperm to the female reproductive system in order to fuse ova. Uh, with sperm. So, this is a process called insemination. After insemination, now uh, we will see the structure of the sperm and ova 
in our later discussion, uh, uh, later classes, but we need to understand the gross picture, what is happening and what we are going to talk about in, in, in this whole topic. So, first we need to understand what are the gametes, then how these gametes are getting developed, how these gametes are getting transferred. So, the first, uh, the, the male gamete has to transfer into the female side because the actual um, uh, uh, individual, the actual person who is going to deliver a baby is a female counterpart. So, something needs to be transferred from the male side, so that it can fuse in the female body. So, the sperm is getting inseminated, the terminological insemination. So, sperm is getting transferred into the female reproductive system and the sperm and ova is getting fused and after fusion, the fusion, the process of fusion is called fertilization fertilization. So, the fertilization is a process of fusion. So, this is a process of transfer and this is a process of fusion. So, now the male and the female gametes, the sperm and ova are getting fused, are getting mixed and this process is called fertilization. And after fertilization, there the earlier these, these were two cells. Now, try to understand here. So, you have a sperm here as a single cell, we have ova as a single cell. Now, these two cells are getting mixed and forming a single cell. Now, that single cell that is formed after the fusion of male and the female gamete is called zygote. So, this is zygote. So, zygote is nothing but the mixture of male and the female gamete. So, male plus female gamete is called zygote. So, zygote as such is considered as the first cell of the human body, because this particular cell is going to develop into a complete organism, a complete individual, complete human beings. We are talking exclusively now about human reproduction. So, we need to understand here that this is the first cell of the human body and this particular cell is going to form a complete individual after division. So, this particular single cell is going to divide into various forms. So, now what is happening? So, this is the process of fusion, fertilization and after that what we are getting is called zygote. Now, so we have zygote now. So, zygote is the first the single cell uh, uh, formed by the fusion of male and the female gamete. This zygote is undergoing various kind of division, various multiplication cycle, rapid multiplication, slow multiplication and all. So, lot of multiplication is going on because we have many cells right. We are complete grown up mature individuals. We have huge amount of cellular population. We are talking about the first cell. This is a single cell. This needs to multiply in many forms so that to form a complete individual right. So, there will be a complete division. We will discuss about that division which is called cleavage actually. So, the cleavage is going to form various kind of a structure and after that this zygote is getting first stage after certain multiplication this zygote is getting attached to the mother uterus. So, the actual area where the baby is getting developed this is called uterus, uterus. So, uterus is an area where the, the baby, the fetus, the, the young ones uh, is getting proper development. So, there should be a connection right. We need to connect it. This zygote needs a proper connection with the human body or the mother body particularly, so that to get all the nutrition, so as to get the blood supply, so as to get the all the required information, required things in order to do multiplication right. For that reason, uterus is getting kind of attachment. So, uterus suppose this is a wall of uterus. So, the wall of uterus is getting attached with this zygote and this attachment is very important because this attachment is providing all the nutrition to the growing zygote because all the available nutrient is coming from the mother side. So, this is mother's uterus and the, the whole information is getting into this zygote. This process is called implantation implantation. 
So implantation is nothing but attachment of zygote to the mother womb or mother uterus in order to do a proper development. And once the uterus implantation is fixed, then after getting proper nutrition and all this zygote is started multiplying and after proper multiplication, many multiplication cycle, there will be a complete grown of fetus here. So, the young baby actually is growing in this uterine cavity and this particular uh, uh, grown up baby after like a period. So, uh, let us see here now what is happening. So, um, so let us delete this part. So, after implantation what is happening that the mother is providing complete nutrition to the growing young one and this growing young ones earlier it was zygote now it is growing going to develop right and there will be a time scale it's not like one day process not like two days process but there is a time frame for example in case of human being we have 9 months time so in 9 months time this one cell will be uh, completely developed uh, de uh, going to develop into a, a small young ones right that period is called gestation period So, gestation period is a time duration where the zygote is getting complete maturation inside the mother uterus and this time period is very specific for an individual animal. For example, as I said earlier, the example in case of human being we have 9 months, in other species we have other uh, different time scale. So, this gestation period after completing the gestation period, the young ones are getting proper development, the young ones are getting matured and once the young ones are getting complete uh, division and what we call the specific terminology, I am just using that terminology not to confuse with uh, because we are going to discuss this one again and again. The proper uh, uh, terminology is called organogenesis. So, after the formation of organ, so uh, the, the formation of organ is called organogenesis. So, once this individual which is uh, who is growing inside the mother uterus is getting proper development like proper liver and everything, there, there will be a birth of a young child. So, young one is coming out and the process of giving birth is called parturition. parturition. So, this is birth right now. So, we will try to understand this whole uh, phenomena in a different style. So, the first stage what we di discussed is the proper male and the female gametes. So, male gamete is called sperm and the female gamete is called ova. These two cells are formed by a process called gametogenesis. In case of females, it is called oogenesis. In case of male, it is called spermatogenesis. So, they are forming a sperm and ova accordingly to different. After formation, these two cells are getting fused, right. So, before fusion, one has to transfer the sperm or the sperm is getting transferred from male body to the female organ, female reproductive system and the process is called insemination. And after insemination, the male and the female ga gametes are getting fused by the process called fertilization. And after fertilization, we are getting a single cell and the cell is the first cell in the human body, it is called zygote. And after the zygote formation, this zygote is getting attached to uh, the mother body and the particular area where it, these are getting attachment are called uterus. So, in uterus they are getting proper attachment, uh, I am not going to discuss this particular terminology, this is called placenta, the attachment is called placenta. So, now this is now started getting all the nutrition and other thing from the mother's body and after a proper time interval, after a proper gap of time and that time interval is called gestation. So, gestation period is a complete developmental, complete embryonic developmental stage in, in case of human beings. So, now after gestation period, the, the body and all the organs and everything is getting matured, uh, getting developed, everything is done. Now, the, there is a time to get the young ones coming out from the body of mother and that, uh, that coming out process from the mother's body is called parturition and this is nothing but the birth of a young one. So, 
this is in total what we are talking about the human reproduction. So let's start with the male reproductive system. So we will discuss about male first. So male reproductive system comprises of a pair of testes. So ductal system. So we have lot of ducts involved in this uh, reproductive system. Some glands are also involved. Right. So uh, in total we have testes, a pair of testes. We have ductal system and there are certain glands. Let us start with the testes first. So uh, testes is a very sensitive organ, a male reproductive organ is located in the pelvic cavity. So the location of this male reproductive system and female reproductive system both actually is in pelvic cavity. So the testis is as I said it is a very sensitive organ located in a very unique sac like structure outside human body. Actually this is not outside human body but this is protruded out in the human body. So this is testis, singular we are calling it testis and in plural because they are paired. So they are called testis T S T E S and the sac like structure that is giving this uh, testes as uh, uh, a proper accommodation is called scrotum. So scrotum is a particular sac like structure giving accommodation to testes. Now why we are saying that the testes is located outside the abdominal cavity uh, uh, outside the human body. So this is located in in not with the uh, actual attachment with the human body. This is always in the bottom. This is always outside the human body. Now why this is important? Because the testis as such is an organ which is responsible for the production of a sperm. Now for production of a sperm you require 2 to 2.5 degree centigrade lower body temperature. right? So you need a lower body temperature, lower temperature. So lower temperature is required in order to make the sperm in the testes. So spermatogenesis is the process we, that we discussed now uh, just a few minutes ago that we have a process called spermatogenesis. Now spermatogenesis requires a lower body temperature because of this reason this testes is located outside the human body to make the temperature down as compared to the normal body. So generally this is about 2 to 2.5 degree centigrade lower as compared to the human body. So this sac is very important. This is giving protection and also a proper covering and all in order to reduce the temperature of testes in to make more sperms. But here there, there will be a tube like structure as, as I discussed that we have lot of tube duct like system and all. So this tube like structure is called vas difference. This is called vas difference. So this vas difference is a ductal system that is coming out from the testis, right? And this testis is giving passage to. So a sperm is getting formed and transported with this, with the help of this duct system, which is called vas difference. Now this vas difference is coming back to, so this, this is going back to the pelvic cavity. This is outside the body and then this whole structure is inside pelvic cavity. This vas difference is connected to a very specific gland and actually this is opening into a very specific gland like a structure. And this gland is called prostate. So prostate is a gland and this gland is giving attachment to different ductal system. One ductal system is vas difference. There is another opening of an another gland. This is called seminal vesicle. So this gland is called seminal vesicle. So let us delete and write it somewhere else. So we have prostrate here and this is called seminal vesicle, seminal vesicle. So seminal vesicle is another gland. This is giving also the opening into this prostrate. So this 
this com this is common passage and in this prostrate the whole ductal system is coming out and then mixing with another ductal system and that is the common passage for the urinary system also so this is getting attached to the duct system which is coming from the urinary bladder so suppose this is kidney and this kidney is what we have discussed that you have the urinary bladder and then this is a kind of urethra so basically this is what is continuation of urethra so this is nothing but urethra so what is happening here that the whole ductal system is coming out in the form of a opening and that opening is common for both reproductive system as well as excretory system here this ductal system which is giving passage is a unique structure where the glands are involved now around the passage there will be another gland associated with this lubrication process so there will be another gland associated structure here in the passage of the tubes that carries sperm and this is nothing but bulbo urethral gland bulbo urethral gland so bulbo urethral gland is also taking part in the pro in the whole male reproductive system where the whole sperm which is coming out from this testis is getting lubricated by the fluid secretion coming out from this glandular structure this sometime this particular gland is also called as cowper's gland cowper's gland there is a proper covering of this whole structure and this whole structure the whole muscular mass that is giving opening to this urethra outside the human body is called penis and this is nothing but the organ that is giving passage to the urinary system as well as sperm coming out from the male reproductive system so let's discuss about testis now so this testis is a roughly a very unique organ so if we see the length wise it is approximately 4 to 5 cm in length and in diameter is approximately 2 to 3 cm approximately so uh, this these are just an approximation so this is also approximate length and approximate width now this is a very fragile organ <coughs> and uh, and this is the outer covering we called it scrotum if we see this testis there are lot of compartments actually inside this testis so these are divided into many compartments small compartments here this particular kind of compartment is having lots of ductal system so in in human testis there are many compartments as i said approximately there are 250 compartments approximate compartment 250 and each compartment is having more than 3 sometime 3 more than 3 also unique ductal system and these ducts are called as seminiferous tubules semini ferous tubules these seminiferous tubules are taking the sperm with a very unique kind of ductal system and this ductal system is called reti testis so this reti testis is continued by uh, another ductal system here so uh, we can see lot of ducts are involved here so there were a mess work of the ductal system we call it reti testis and then we have uh, another ductal system which is called vas efferensia efferensia so vas efferensia is nothing but the ductal system giving connectivity of reti testis to another structure which is another coil like structure or uh, meswork of the ductal system and this 
स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड एपीडिडाइमिस सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग दैट वी हैव द स्मॉल कंपार्टमेंट वी हैव टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी कंपार्टमेंट एज सच देर आर मेनी मोर ऑल्सो सो अप्रॉक्सिमेटली टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी कंपार्टमेंट आर देर एंड ईच कंपार्टमेंट इज हैविंग थ्री और मोर सेमिनीफेरस ट्रिब्यूल्स एंड दिस सेमिनीफेरस ट्रिब्यूल इज गेटिंग कनेक्टेड टू अर मेसवर्क ऑफ इन एरिया विच इज कॉल्ड रेटी टेस्टिस दिस रेटी टेस्टिस इज कंटिन्यूड विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ वेरी यूनिक डक्टल सिस्टम कॉल्ड वास एफ्रेंसिया एंड दिस वास एफ्रेंसिया इज कंटिन्यूड इन टू अनदर डक्टल एरिया कॉल्ड इपीडिडाइमिस एंड दिस इपीडिडाइमिस इज गेटिंग कंटिन्यूड इन टू अनदर डक्टल सिस्टम एंड दैट्स वॉट वी डिस्कस्ड जस्ट फ्यू मिनट्स बैक दैट दिस इज कॉल्ड वास डिफरेंस so uh, whatever we discussed about the human reproduction um, um let's try to see it in in a nice diagrammatic and pictorial representation here so this is a complete uh, human reproductive system and uh, if we see this is uh, testis and this testis is connected to uh, this ductal appearance which we called epididymis and this epididymis is basically getting continued with this ductal uh, system so this ductal system is called vas deferens so this vas deferens is the duct that is communicating from another glandular structure and this is what is going again and this is merging to the ductal system of the gland so now we have this gland that is called prostate and there is another gland here which we call seminal vesicle seminal vesicle so the seminal vesicle prostate uh, are the two glands which are giving their ejaculation or their uh, their secretion um into this ductal system so this vas deferens is actually getting the secretion of um uh, the the glands and that gland is prostate and seminal vesicle now this duct is getting continued here so basically this duct is getting continued in this uh, area and then this is passing here in the form of urethra and then this ductal system is uh, uh, having another gland in 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 due course of communication to the outside and that gland is called bulbo urethral gland and uh, this is also what we discuss is called cowper gland so these are the three gland like structures uh, in the human reproductive system the first one is a uh, prostate uh, seminal vesicle and bulbo urethral gland and these are secreting all their uh, secretion into this vas deferens that is coming out in the form of urethra to the outside environment now if we see uh, here that we have another um, uh, a huge uh, um, Uh, kind of mixing of the glandular system uh, or mixing of the uh, or the organ system now if you see in 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 the top of prostate gland we have this big area and that is nothing but the urinary bladder and that's what we discussed in our in our uh, lecture that uh, we have mixing of urinary system and the reproductive system and both the ducts um uh, coming out from the urinary system and the reproductive system has a common outward opening in the form of urethra now here this is what is coming out in, in getting some urine that is filtered out uh, from urinary bladder and then this is mixed up with the secretion which are coming out from this accessory gland as well as this testis so testis uh, secretion uh, in the form of a sperm and this uh, testicular gland in the form of all ductal system and all glandular secretions are mixing uh, and coming out with this outward ex um, opening uh, which is called urethra now this part which is giving opening to uh, urethra or opening outside is what we call is penis and in in the in the flap end in the in the last end this particular area is called prepuce sometime it is also called as foreskin 
This is just an outside area uh, that is giving uh, a flap like hanging area, the skin uh, area outside is called prepuce or sometimes it is also called as foreskin. While there is another um, huge muscular area here that is uh, uh, kind of uh, just uh, beneath the prepuce, the area is called glans penis. And this is uh, another muscular area that is there at the external opening. So, in total this is about the complete human reproductive system where we have a complete gland ductal system and uh, a specific organ that is called testis that is producing sperm. So, after looking into uh, this whole structure of human reproduction, let us try to see this particular uh, testis in a, in, a, in, a, in a broad scale. Now, here is what is uh, uh, looking um, in, in, in uh, looked uh, when we are taking a longitudinal section. When we take a longitudinal section of this testis, it, it is having this small ductal appearance, we call it seminiferous tubule seminiferous tubules and this seminiferous tubules is getting continued into what we call ready testis. So, this ready testis is continuing into another ductal um, area and this ductal area is called vas efferensia. So, this vas efferensia is nothing but the continuation of ready testis towards another ductal appearance, a rectal coil like um, area and that is called epididymis. So, epididymis is nothing but the coil structure just in continuation to the vas efferensia and this vas efferensia is very important connectivity to the epididymal structure. Now, this epididymis is a huge coiled body. And this body is having an upper head area, we call it head of epididymis and then similarly we have a tail area, we call it tail of epididymis. And this epididymis is continue into another same duct system what we discussed which is called vas difference. So, vas difference is nothing but the continuation of epididymis and this is what is communicating outside with the gland structure. So, this is going up and then communicating uh, with the gland. Now, uh, just uh, try to see that this whole thing is under uh, a small sheath like structure and we call that sheath as scrotum and this is scrotum temperature is 2 to 2 to 2.5 degree centigrade lower as compared to the body temperature. Now, this uh, whole structure is what we have discussed in the longitudinal section. Now, the, the, uh, the testes uh, as such completely is supplied with this blood vessel which is called testicular artery, testicular artery. So, this testicular artery is giving blood supply to the testes. So, um, this is in, in total uh, about the, the testes um, is ductal system uh, in the longitudinal section and in the next uh, class we will try to discuss about this particular seminiferous tubule.